Today, I'm taking you all on a trip to Texas, where we'll be discussing some of the darkest unsolved mysteries in the Lone Star State. Any Texans here, let me know some of the strangest things you've experienced down in the comments. I'm your host, James, and these are the top 10 terrifying secrets hidden inside Texas. And we're starting off this list with what has been dubbed the Lover's Lane case. In 1990, a young couple, Cheryl Henry, 22, and Andy Atkinson, 21, headed out to spend the night together, but they were never seen alive again. Their bodies were found the next day in a wooded area in West Houston known as Lover's Lane. The scene was pretty horrific. There were slash wounds to both of their necks. Andy was found tied to a tree, and Cheryl was found underneath a collapsed fence. Authorities were able to take DNA samples of whoever the assailant was, but they were never able to match it to anyone, meaning most likely this guy had no criminal record. And I do say guy because of the type of DNA they obtained. Over 30 years later, this case has sadly never been solved, and whoever's responsible could still be roaming around out there. The Amber Hagerman case. Amber Hagerman, a nine-year-old girl from Arlington, Texas, was at her grandparents' house on January 13th, 1996. Her and her younger brother were out playing. Amber was on her bicycle and she started riding further and further down the road towards a grocery store. Her brother decided to turn back, but Amber never came back. She'd been taken by a man in a black van in the grocery store parking lot. There was only one witness to her abduction. An intense search effort began with the community rallying together and law enforcement agencies mobilizing to try and find her. Sadly though, four days after her abduction, Amber's body was discovered in a local creek, not a long way from where she was abducted. What makes this case extra tragic is the fact that the assailant has never been found. This tragedy led Amber's mother, Donna Norris, to help establish the Amber Alert System, though an emergency notification system designed to rapidly disseminate information about abductions to law enforcement agencies, media outlets, and the general public. That's that little ringer thing you get on your phone, the little update. The Amber Alert System uh, has since been adopted and implemented in numerous countries around the world. So if there's anything, anything good that came out of the case, it's that. Next up we have the Killing Fields. This is a stretch of land located in League City near Interstate 45, where numerous bodies have been discovered over the years, leading to one of the most haunting and perplexing mysteries in the state's history. Since the 1970s, law enforcement authorities have uncovered the remains of multiple victims in this desolate area, earning it the chilling nickname. The identity of the assailant or assailants responsible for these deaths remain unknown and whose victims were primarily young women. Despite extensive investigations, the authorities have struggled to piece together the puzzle and bring the perpetrators to justice. Various theories and speculations have of course emerged over the years, ranging from the involvement of multiple assailants to potential connections with other unsolved crimes in the region. The families of the victims as well as dedicated investigators persistently seek answers, hoping to one day unveil the truth and find a bit of closure. The Phantom of Texarkana. The Phantom of Texarkana. Back in the spring of 1946, a series of violent attacks happened in a 10 week time span. Whoever this creep was, they wreaked havoc in the town of Texarkana, going on a rampage of terror. He operated at nighttime, targeting mostly young couples who were just minding their own business, parked in the dark corners of the town. There have been eight victims, and five of which lost their lives. Law enforcement went into overdrive trying to catch this elusive boogeyman, but he managed to slip through their fingers every single time. The whole town was on edge. And folks were locking their doors, looking over their shoulders. The media ate it up, uh, too, referring to it as the Texarkana Moonlight Murders. And the story spread far and wide, making this a pretty infamous case. The phantom vanished as quickly as he appeared, though, leaving the town and its residents in a state of shock, confusion. Decades have passed and his true identity still remains a mystery. The Icebox. In June of 1965, the residents of Houston, Texas were left 
in shock and confusion when the lifeless bodies of Fred and Edwina Rogers were discovered inside their own home. But what made this case truly macabre was the manner in which their bodies were found. They had been stuffed inside the family's refrigerator. The horrifying nature of the crime, coupled with the absence of any clear motive or suspects, has propelled the case into this realm of mystery. Investigations into the Icebox case were met with numerous baffling elements. The lack of forced entry suggested that the assailant was either known to the victims or possessed an intricate knowledge of their routine. The home had also been meticulously cleaned after the attack, which made, you know, gathering up evidence pretty difficult. And there was also this absence of a clear motive, which really added another layer of intrigue to it, leaving the investigators grasping at straws for answers. Over the years, theories surrounding the Icebox case have circulated. Some speculate that the crime was a result of a family dispute, while others entertain the possibility that someone could have been hired to commit the act. And then, of course, there are those who hypothesize that the assailant may have simply been a deranged individual who really had no motive and attacked them completely at random. At number five on the list, we have the televangelist bomber. This disturbing case began back in January of 1990 when a mysterious package was sent to Lakewood Church in Houston. The daughter of Pastor John Austin opened the package and it exploded. Luckily, she survived, but received third degree burns and cuts to her legs and abdomen. In April of that same year, a second package was sent. This one to the Christian Broadcasting Network in Virginia, where a security guard named Scott Sheepers almost lost his life. The package had looked suspicious and the TV station had received death threats before, so they were pr on pretty high high alert in general. They put the package through an x-ray machine. Sheepers didn't spot anything out of the ordinary at first, but something about it still seemed off to him. He went to cut into part of the box before taking a couple steps back, at which point the package exploded and sending Sheepers flying to the floor. He was transported to the hospital where shrapnel was removed from his leg and he did survive. Both packages had been sent from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Until this day, the identity of the sender has never been found. Number four, Sam Bass's treasure. All right, Sam Bass was this notorious outlaw during the late 1800s. He was known for his daring train robberies. According to the lore, Bass and his gang managed to accumulate quite a substantial fortune through their criminal activities, amassing a hidden treasure that till this day has never been fully recovered. The whereabouts of Bass's treasure has remained a mystery, fueling countless treasure hunting expeditions and inspiring countless stories and speculations. Many believe that Bass buried his loot in various locations across Texas, particularly in the areas around Denton where he operated. Some claim that Bass left cryptic clues and treasure maps, teasing treasure hunters with the possibility of finding his hidden riches. Over the years, numerous treasure seekers have dedicated themselves to try and unravel the secrets of the whereabouts of his treasure. They have combed through historical records, studied old maps, and explored the Texas landscape in search of his stash. Despite their efforts though, the treasure has never been found. It's kind of like a Western version of One Piece. I love it. The thing is though, I think if someone did find it, I mean, would they report it? Or would they just kind of like keep it to themselves? I don't know. Maybe someone has found it. At number three, we have the case of Lori Ruff. Lori Ruff was this woman with a seemingly ordinary existence, although she was always rather secretive about her past. And her husband, Blake Ruff, had a lot of questions. And as it would turn out, she wasn't exactly who she seemed. In 2010, she ended up taking her secrets to the grave after taking her own life, leaving behind a trail of these perplexing clues and unanswered questions. Blake Ruff discovered a lockbox in her closet that only added to his confusion surrounding her past. It seemed as if Lori previously went by the name Becky Sue Turner. But Becky Sue Turner was the name of a girl who had died in a house fire back in 1971. So Ruff was left in kind of utter shock, confusion. Who was this woman he'd married back in 2003? Investigators were on the case, and as it turned out, Becky wasn't her only other name. Lori was actually born as Kimberly McLean, who had gone missing in 1986. She had run away from home at 18 years old. The question still remains though, why did she leave home? And how did she acquire the birth certificate of a girl who died 
in 1971. At number two, we have the Marfa Lights. The mystery surrounding the Texas Marfa Lights has fascinated locals and visitors alike for decades. Nestled in the remote desert landscape near the town of Marfa, these unexplained phenomena manifest as strange floating orbs of light that appear in the night sky. Witnesses have described them as glowing orbs of various colors ranging from white, yellow, to blue and red. The lights often dance and dart and hover in the distance, defying all conventional explanations. Numerous theories have been proposed, of course, to explain the origin of these lights, but none of them have actually been able to fully unravel it. Some speculate that they are the result of natural occurrences like atmospheric gases or reflections from distant headlights. Others attribute them, of course, to supernatural or extraterrestrial origin, believing that they are the work of ghosts or alien visitations. Skeptics argue that the lights are simply the, you know, product of illusions or, you know, misinterpretations. But uh, there's quite the allure behind it, and it's led to the establishment of viewing areas and research centers dedicated to studying and observing them. Scientists, paranormal enthusiasts, and curious visitors flock to the region in search of answers. That's something I'd like to see. I might have to take a trip to Texas, find some treasure, see some cool lights. It'll be a good time. And finally, we have the Leveland UFO case. This case stands as one of the most compelling incidents in the history of unidentified flying objects. It unfolded on the night of November 2nd, 1957 in Leveland, Texas, when the multiple witnesses reported encountering a series of bizarre events involving unidentified flying aircraft or aircrafts. Throughout the night, several motorists reported their vehicles stalling and electrical systems failing as they observed a large, almost egg-shaped object hovering in the vicinity. The witnesses described the craft emanating a blinding light in this intense heat. The accounts of the Leveland UFO sightings were remarkably consistent too, with witnesses from different locations reporting similar experiences. Law enforcement officers and local authorities were flooded with these reports throughout the night, which really adds to the credibility of the events. However, when law enforcement officers did arrive on these scenes, the crafts had already disappeared. This case uh, attracted the attention of the United States Air Force, leading to an investigation by Project Blue Book, the official U.S. government program tasked with studying UFO reports. Despite their efforts, though, no definitive explanation was ever provided. Skeptics have offered theories ranging from, again, atmospheric phenomena to maybe electrical disturbances, but others believe this is genuine extraterrestrial encounter. But others still believe it's uh, it's aliens, which I, I also like that idea a lot more. There's this just this consistency and the number of witnesses, which uh, again, very interesting. With all that said though, I've been your host James and I will catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.